As one of the most hyped DPS ever since her teaser, Archron enters Panacony with a bang, having the highest potential damage ceiling across all of our current hypercarry team comps. This 5-star Lightning Nihility comes with a shroud of mystery, with a little bit of misinformation surrounding her kit, such as the reliance on the light cone, inflexible team building, slow ultima uptime, should we use speed or attack boots, and many more. Hey guys, Mr. Poki here, back with another video. With the Creator Experience server releasing a much more detailed look at Archon's kit, uh, today's CN analysis will be something special by breaking down exactly every single possible doubt that players may have for Archon so that you guys can have the best possible Archon playing experience in Hongai Stario. But without further ado, let's get into today's content. Subscribe! So as we know by now, Archon's kits and talents and light coins and idolins, they have all been presented in most of the creator experience server. So I wouldn't want to go on very, very in-depth for now. But later on, there will be a lot of questions that players may have, especially with regards to Archon's talents and how exactly does Slash Dream works, right? How exactly does Ultimate Rotations work? So very briefly going through a kit, the basic attack, you're probably never going to be using this. You're always going to be using Archon's skill to generate Slash Dreams, right? For Archon's skill, Autobot Flash, it has pretty sub part multipliers at 160% plus 120% to adjacent targets but the real purpose of this skill is to add slash dream and crimson knot um, both of which will be explained a little bit more in depth in the talent for archron's bread and butter which is slash dream cries in red red the ultimate aoe damage it is basically split into two different portions the first being a three single target hit second one being a large aoe or enemy hit for the three single target hit the best possible damage output is to focus all of the hits on the highest health target, preferably with Crimson Knots. Although the final AoE does remove all Crimson Knots, earlier hit using the 3 single target will trigger Thunder Core, which increases the total damage output inclusive of all of the subsequent kits within the ultimate. The final AoE ultimate should be able to destroy all of the mobs, leaving the remaining elite behind for Archon to destroy uh, with the subsequent ultimates you can use. Uh, so in a sense, Archon's X sort of like a destruction unit with the heavy emphasis on the main target and splash damage to deal with mobs similar to Imbibitor, Lune, Qingliu, and Blade. Now, talking about Archon's talent. First part, you can use the ultimate upon 9 stacks and keep in mind that when using ultimate, it reduces enemy toughness regardless of weakness typing and all type rest penetration. This all type rest penetration it is considered as a debuff, so it will trigger the four-piece pioneer set, something to keep in mind. During the duration of this ultimate, you cannot gain any stacks of slash dreams, and you are going to be removing all crimson knots, which means if you start off this ultimate with nine stacks of slash dreams, uh, you will end the ultimate with zero stacks of slash dreams, right? You are not going to be getting any of this. But in terms of how slash dream and crimson knot works, Think of Slash Dream as Archon's energy and think of Crimson Knot as the bomb, right? It's similar, it's very similar to Tristana's E skill if you guys play League of Legends. So Crimson Knot is not considered as a debuff, therefore it's not going to trigger the Pioneer 4 piece. It is simply a delayed damage that will trigger or explode upon Archon's ultimate. Another thing to note is that Crimson Knot's transfer is also cross wave, which means wave 1's Crimson Knot can be transferred to wave 2, assuming that there is still any Crimson Knots left on the enemy. If you kill everything using Archon's ultimate, which means they have removed all Crimson Knots, then there will be no Crimson Knots for wave 2. It also caps at 9 stacks, no further Crimson Knots will be added, although we can gain additional stacks of Archon slash dreams beyond the 9 stacks, right? Uh, more of this will be explained later on. And finally, for Archon's Technique Quadrivalent Ascendance, this is pretty much the best technique in the entire game for overworld and simulated universe farmers, right? There's no cooldown, no technique points if you missed, and you can just repeatedly spam this technique, albeit it will not work on throttles, right? So one important thing to note is that when using this technique, it does provide both experience and credits to the entire team when the mobs are slain in the overall. So be sure to stock up on your technique points next and look out for technique points in the overall in order to ensure a smooth farming experience with Archon, right? Now jumping into her tracers, her minor tracers of 28% attack 24% crit damage and 8% lightning damage boost is going to be excellent excellent tracers there's no wasted sets whatsoever for a hyper carry powerhouse like Archron right for her next trace rate only the first half is equivalent to any energy unit starting the battle with half energy in memory of chaos the second half is going to be the real banger right it basically allows Archron to have stored charge in case she exceeds the 9 stacks of slash dreams right this can be extremely useful 
especially when you know that your ultimate will defeat all enemies in this particular wave, but you still have more actions from your supports, such as your Tain Yuan, your Silver Pella. So you can actually let your allies squeeze in some additional stacks before Archon kills them with an ultimate, which then allows Archon to start off with three stacks instead of zero stacks towards the next ultimate, greatly improving Archon's rotation for the second wave. Now the next trace, the Abyss. This trace in particular is basically telling players that Archon is very difficult to build a team because you need two inhibity units to gain the full 160% damage buff, right? Now there has been speculations that Archon will perform better by dropping a inhibity for a harmony support, namely Sparkle, to increase Archon's slash dream stacking using a skill and ignoring the 45% damage, right? If you want to run Sparkle with Archon, with, because of Sparkle's very high speed, it brings for Archon's action value advance, which allows Archon to gain more turns on top of the damage buff, the crit damage buff, and if you have an E2 sparkle, then there's also defense penetration, right? But unfortunately, through multiple tests from myself as well as the CN community, Pella and Silver Wolf, they consistently outperform a sparkle substitute for in practice. What I've noticed is that with Pella, Silver Wolf, as well as a sustain, Archron can achieve a zero cycle quite comfortably, where if you change one of the utility for Sparkle, it is now at two cycles. Uh, maybe you couldn't get a zero cycle using two utility, maybe you just get one cycle, but that is still roughly a one cycle drop off, which is a, a lot slower in terms of action value, right? Because you need a lot more action value to deal with the target now. So although clear cycles, they are not an absolute indication of a unit's best and stop team composition or a unit's damage output, it is undeniable that Pella and Silver Wolf synergy with Archron due to the damage amplification from the Abyss, defense down, slash dream stacking, they far outperform Sparkle's 50% action value advance as well as her crit damage and damage buffs. So as a rule of thumb, two nihility units is going to be very highly recommended for an E0 Archon, not only for the 45% damage buff, but also due to a nihility unit's ability to stack on slash dreams and their respective debuffs, right? So that's going to be that. And finally, Thunder Core, as mentioned in the ultimate section, this encourages Archon to use her three single target ultimate on targets with Crimson Knot so as to improve the remaining ultimate's damage output by up to 90%, right? Because you need to hit an enemy target with Crimson Knot to increase the damage by 30%, stacking up to three times lasting for three turns. So if you were to not hit a target with Crimson Knot for the first hit, then you're not going to gain the 30% damage buff. Although once you get the first ultimate going, this buff does last for three turns, uh, which is pretty much more than enough since Archon can very comfortably do a one turn ultimate rotation. For the Stygian Research or the final AOE, it further adds on additional damage but to a random target. So once again, this goes back to the point of Archon's best interest for her highest damage output is to eliminate the trash mobs as soon as possible and focus fire on the main target so that they can all be concentrated on one target and just deal tons of damage, right? So that is going to be that for Archon's brief kit explanation and jumping straight into Eidolons, you can see the numbers over here. Her E1 is basically a permanent 18% crit rate buff or 36 crit value since all enemies that we are going to be fighting with Archon should have debuffs at all times. Uh, note that this is not inclusive in relic trigger conditions such as Sao Soto, Rutan Arena, similar to Banditry's 4P set as well as Incessant Raid's crit rate buff. Right? So this is not inclusive. Uh, at the end of the day, this I don't know one is not that big of a damage increase cal calculating at roughly 10%. So the big changer is going to be Archon's I did 2. Now this is absolutely game changing for two main reasons. Number one, it completely reforms the teammates that Archon can use, which essentially swaps out one of the Nihility for a Harmony support, namely Sparkle. As it stands right now, Harmony units, they tend to scale a lot better with powerhouses like Ramay, Sparkle, and Bronya, and all of which can greatly improve Archon's damage output without gimping on Archon's 45% damage buff. Uh, the most impactful portion is not just the team swap, it is also the enabling of a 3 plus 1 Archon running Bronya Sparkle Pella, right? Your two harmonies and one ability, which is the current strongest hyper carry setup going toe to toe against E2 in Bimbiton Dune and sometimes even outperforming E2 in Bimbiton Dune against the right element. Another reason why this item is so good. It's not just because you remove one utility unit, it's also because the second portion which states you gain an additional stack upon Archron's turns, which means on top of Archron's S1, Archron now gains three stacks of Slash Dream every single time her turn begins. And you can see how this can very quickly snowball when you add in action value manipulators such as Sparkle and Bronya 
giving Akron a lot, a lot of turns, right? So they make Akron skill extremely well compared to the E0 variation, not just for the lack of nility, but also because she gains one more stack at E2, right? So that's why Akron's E2 is absolutely game-changing. Akron's E4, frankly speaking, is a very, very weak item for a only 6% damage increase. It doesn't count as an additional debuff. So unfortunately, with Akron's E4, you're not able to gain an additional stack of Slayer Streeps, right? On the same note, the 8% vulnerability on ultimate damage is also not really a very big impact so at the end of the day this e4 is really not that important but with e6 then it completes Archon's kit as pretty much one of the strongest e6 you know you have which is increased all type res pen for ultimate damage and now Archon's basic attack and skill will also be considered as ultimate damage as well as ignoring enemy weakness so on top of the res penetration this will include the 8% ultimate vulnerability the Salsoto damage buffs and ignore all weakness typing which means you can quite literally run Akron against any enemy element and you can consistently deal with the toughness bar damage. So this E6 is extremely, extremely strong because uh, it basically just ties up all of Akron's kit into one, right? Comparable to E6 daughter ratio and E6 in people to the name. But it is not directly because of Akron's E6. It is more so because of Akron's base kit since E0 combining everything up until E6. So in summary, Archon is perfectly viable at E0. E2, it changes the team comp for Archon to a more harmony focused build. But if you want to stick with two nihility team comps with Archon, then it's completely fine to just keep it at E0. Or, and I'll be explaining this in the team comp section, you can simply just run a 3 plus 1 Archon where you still run two nihility, but now you run in another Sparkle with Archon to deal tons of damage without gimping on Sparkle's value, right? Archon's E6, it scales and ties everything from E0 to E6, but Archon's S1 has a much bigger value than E1 and arguably even E2. Now going into, in my opinion, the most important part of today's CN unit analysis, that is Archon's rotations. I will be splitting this into two segments. The first being how her talent works and the second being an example of how many ultimates can Archon use in a single battle, right? So exactly how does Slash Dream work? So Slash Dream, it heavily impacts on how Archon will play in practice, as well as this will explain how Archon's light cones, team comms, and relic work. So without understanding Archon's slash dream, you can't really expect to play Archon optimally. And it is quite simple to understand once you summarize everything, but if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, there is a lot, a lot of factors involved, right? As a general rule of thumb, slash dream has two criteria, and both of them have to be fulfilled in order for Archon to gain an additional stack. Number one is it must take place on an action on the action value bar right you can see the little bar at the side if there's a little grid the character's grid appears it means that it has taken action although there are also some exceptions to this i'll explain this later and number two a debuff must be applied so as long as these two criteria have been fulfilled then archron will gain slash dreams right so as you can see over here this is gonna be the full list of things that archron can gain a slash dream effect from right you guys can pause screenshot read at your own notes so i'll just be briefly running them down so that we don't spend too much time uh first of all very simple debuffs from an ally action such as basic attack skill ultimate follow-up technique talent mechanics during an ally action or an enemy action they will apply one stack of slash dreams right note that dot can also apply one stack of slash dream as long as the action itself it refreshes the dot or add additional stacks of the dot so examples would include black swan queen iphone and kafka's ultimate right note that entanglement stack is not counted since it is not our ally that's applying the entanglement stack the enemy is already broken and because of the entanglement break the enemy will be getting this extra stacks of entanglement debuff it is not caused by our ally another point debuff from enemies death such as the robot fish explosion the robot dog explosion uh that will also include as one stack of slash streams right debuffs from memory of chaos turbulence as well as similar universe resonance such as your nihility path they will also count as one stack of slash streams right and debuffs that it is applied on enemy entering such as black swans arcana or whenever a new enemy enters this will only work if the enemies are summoned in during an action for example alumatron gatekeeper summoning in fishes while activating sanction mode if not this will not apply any slash dreams for archron which means at the start of each wave 
Arkron will not gain any additional slash dreams. All right, so very, very important to keep in mind. Uh, moving on next, debuffs applied from a unit's technique, such as Black Swan, Huo Huo, Pella, Silver Wolf, or even Well and Himiko, they will all add stacks of slash dreams. But the most important point is these techniques, they are independent from one another, which means that if you were to use Well's technique, Black Swan's technique, Huo Huo's technique, as well as Arkron's technique with her signature Lycon equipped, this will allow Arkron to start with nine points of slash dreams, casting an ultimate instantly, which is pretty, pretty cool, right? Uh, one thing to note is that for few techniques such as Himical, Weld, and Daughter Ratio, it will apply to both waves, right? For both Wave 1 and Wave 2, they'll generate one set of Slash so do keep that in mind. Uh, next, debuffs applied to multiple targets at the same time using the same ability, such as Pella's Ultimate will only count as one Slash Streams. And next, debuffs from Action plus a Light Cone debuff, such as Archon's Signature Light Cone 1, they will count as independent stacks. So if Archon has her Signature Light Cone equipped after using slash dreams it will apply two different debuffs so for light cones such as resolution silver wolf's light cone uh kafka signature light cone now these debuffs they cannot be reapplied on the enemy if they already have set debuff right aether code erode and uh defense down from resolution they cannot stack on on top of each other if they already have the debuff then it doesn't work right this has an exception for Archron's signature light codes. Uh, then debuffs from two separate actions, such as enemies attacking a unit with Trend, uh, with two different actions, such as the Sanctus Medicus, as well as the Gatekeeper Automatron. If they attack your Fire Troll Wizard or Japart wearing Trend of Universal Market, it will give Archon two stacks of Slash Dreams, right? Or if you equip Doctor Ratio with Topaz Angel Light Cone, this will also allow two different stacks of Slash Dreams. This is going to be one skill into one full up, so two different actions. Then, like I said, lastly, debuffs from new waves such as Black Swan's Arcana, Silver Wolf's Idolin 2, Archon's Idolin 4, they will not be counted since they, not, they did not take place in an enemy action. And debuffs from DOT inflicted at the start of an enemy's turn, such as Fire Kiss, such as Arcana, such as Kafka's uh, DOT, whatever, uh, this will also not apply any Slash Dreams. So uh, I know it's quite a bit of take in. Feel free to experiment with yourselves. But as long as you follow the general rule of thumb, which is it must take an action on the action value bar, as well as a debuff must be applied, then Archon will apply a stack of slash stream, right? So with that knowledge in mind, I will now be going through an example of her ultimate rotation using Archon, Tunility, and the sustained running trend of Universal Market. So the attached image is showing an example of how many slash dreams can Archon obtain in one wave and two wave using one cycle and two cycles respectively. So for a total of two cycles and four cycles. So this is going to be very, very important to demonstrate why Archon's signature like one might not be as important as you think, right? As you can see from the two cycle example, which is the first half, slash dreams stacks to 25 stacks with signature like one, uh, but 22 when you don't use Signature Light Cone 1, both of which only allows Archon to gain two ultimates, which is 18 stacks of Slash Dreams, right? So this will drastically reduce the gap between Signature Light Cone 1 as well as other alternatives such as Good and Sleep Well. But that being said, for more drawn out battles, such as the four cycle example, Archon's Signature Light Cone 1 allows for 55 stacks of Slash Dreams, while without the Signature Light Cone, it only allows to 49, which means that Archon casts one less ultimate heavily crippling her total damage output if she misses this one ultimate. This is just an example. It is the simulation to gauge roughly how many times Archon can cast an ultimate uh, in this kind of circumstances. And it will be ultimately quite dependent on RNG factors, such as the number of enemies, how often does Trent sustain get hit, how fast the enemies are, right? So generally speaking, Archon can quite literally out every single time her turn comes up, and some situations even allowing for a 0.5 turn ultimate, right? So think of Archon's ultimate as a Lightning Lord, except your entire team can increase the speed of this Lightning Lord by triggering this multiple times, right? Uh, with the all-type rest down, the elemental typing ignore, and the high multipliers, uh, this pretty much cements Archon's position as one of, if not our strongest DPS in the current patch 2.1. So with that explained here are some of the most straightforward things, which is going to be talking about her relic set, right? So number one, Pioneer 4 piece is going to be the best in slot, hands down. Note that, like I mentioned, Crimson Knot is not considered as a debuff, so Archon cannot trigger the secondary effect using her skill. But that being said, the 4 piece effect will trigger upon Archon's ultimate. Because if you take a look at Archon's kit, her ultimate applies a res down debuff from the talent and subsequently the skill afterwards, which means that you do have a 100% uptime for Archon's ultimate and 66% uptime for Archon's skill, which at the end of the day is not that relevant since a majority of Archon's damage comes from the ultimate and not from the skill, right? So Pioneer's 8% crit rate, 24% crit damage, as well as the 12% damage to debuff enemies will very, very easily allow this to be Archon's best in slot. But that being said, 
Uh, Genius 4 piece is also a pretty decent alternative, especially since we all know defense down stacking is still very, very powerful if players want to skip farming for the new set, right? Uh, do note that Silver Wolf with Pella and Resolution Light Cone will give you a 103.9 defense down from a level 10 Silver Wolf Ultimate, level 12 Pella Ultimate, as well as an S5 Resolution, right? Which means that at this point, your 4 piece Genius is completely useless. Future debuffers may add even more defense down, so do take this point into consideration when you're farming for a Genius four piece this can be very good for an e2 archron running with a e2 sparkle pella and bronya for a 82 percent total defense down which means that if you were to use archron with a four piece genius it's gonna be rounding up to 92 percent defense down or 100 percent defense down because defense down caps at 100 percent uh, so this will require wearer to have really really nice crit stop sets because you are basically trading 40 crit value that you're missing from the Pioneer 4 piece, right? So these two sets are gonna be Archon's best in slot. Uh, and for a planetary set, Izumo is also Archon's best in slot due to the raw stats provided from the 12% attack and 12% crit rate. Archon will always be paired up with an Infinity teammate regardless of E0 or E2, making this pretty much the single strongest two piece across any of the planet sets that we have. Uh, but that being said, Sao Soto is also a very, very close substitute to Izumo, which accounts for less than 3% difference since the majority of Archon's damage output is gonna be from her ultimate. Uh, which can be very, very consistent, as I have mentioned earlier on, to get a one-turn ultimate rotation, right? And this will scale even better with Archon's Iden 6, since now your skill is also considered as a ultimate. That's gonna be that for Archon's Relic sets, and jumping into her main slash substats, uh, is a very classic crit hyper carry build. Archon's chest piece is going to be dependent on the substats and use the one that's lacking, right? Note that her E1 will give you 18% crit rate, 4 piece Pioneer has 8% crit rate and 24% crit damage when fully stacked, and Izumo has a 12% crit rate. So do take all these into consideration before deciding the crit or crit damage main piece, right? Because all these crit rate and crit damage, it is not factored into your character loading screen. You can only see if Archon only has 50% crit rate, you might be worried. But in battle, this number goes up by a very, very high amount, right? Uh, for attack and speed, generally CM prefers the attack over speed boots since Archon is a burst damage dealer from abusing her almost permanent one-turn ultimate a rotation, rely on fast teammates to generate more stacks while Archon herself stacks on more damage. Uh, Archon is also one of the highest base attack in the entire game thanks to Signature Light Cone, totaling off to 1,333 compared to Scylla, which is only 1,222, which makes attack percentage worth even more compared to other DPS. And lastly, for attack percentage or lightning damage sphere, attack is roughly 2% better than lightning, so honestly, there's no difference. Just use whichever one has the better stats, right? So that's going to be crit rate slash crit damage for chest, attack boots, attack rope, attack slash lightning damage sphere, and for the subset priority, as usual, it's going to be crit rate slash crit damage, attack percentage, as well as speed in that order. And jumping into Archeron's Light now, there is a very big misconception that Archon is pretty much like unplayable without a Signature Lycon 1, or that Signature Lycon 1 is like miles above every single Lycon in every single scenario. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier on, this has already been disproven based on the amount of times Archon can task the ultimate. And the narrative for Archon Signature Lycon 1 being super strong, it only holds true when you assume that Archon obtain one additional ultimate during the course of battle or even more than one additional ultimate right uh, if the ultimate number remains exactly the same the difference between signature like one to the next substitute which is i'm just going to take example good night sleep well is not that far. So in this case, as you can see, assuming the Archon casts the exact same number of ultimates, Good Night and Sleep Well is only 13% lower than Archon's signature Light Cone, which is really not that big of an impact. But if we were to reach a case where Archon does manage to get off one additional ultimate, then Good Night and Sleep Well is going to plummet back down to 73% compared to 100%, which is going to be a almost 30% damage drop off, right? So since ultimate uptime for Archon, like I mentioned earlier on, is very, very dependent on the environment, E0 Air 0 Archon is perfectly viable without her signature light cone. But that being said, if you'd rather be safe than sorry, you want to make sure that Archon gains all those stacks to make sure that she can gain the ultimate as much as possible, then signature light cone 1 is going to be an excellent pickup, right? So in summary, her signature light cone 1, best in slot. Alternatives to Archon's signature light cone 1 that is not good and sleep well for players that have put for previous signatures can be Incessant Rain or Patience, which is Kafka's signature light cone, right? It is a decent side grade at roughly 88 to 80% of the original 
damage. Uh, Incessant Rain, it does scale off a little bit for multi-target content since Aether Code can only be implanted on a single target, right? The 12% crit rate is also a pretty nice addition which allows for more crit damage. Carpa Signature Icon, the Erode, it also works as a debuff but the speed buff may not see much use and the DOT damage from the Erode Icon is also quite negligible. And lastly, like I mentioned, go down and sleep well. If you can cast the same number of ultimates, it's not that bad. But if you lose that one additional ultimate, then it's going to fall off by quite hard. So in summary, players would be recommended to try and obtain S1 before any of Archon's Idolons. You don't need S1, but if you're choosing between S1 and Idolon 1, definitely get an S1 before Idolons, right? So that's pretty much it. And jumping into Archon's final segment, which is her team compositions. Archon supposedly is very restrictive in terms of team comps. And while it is true that Pella and Silverwolf plus a trend sustain is Archon's best slot team slot, Archon's kit itself, her damage output is so high to the point where even if you don't run an optimal setup, she can still very, very easily defeat the endgame content. And quoting the CN content creator, her qualities are very similar to Qing Liu, right? excellent and as long as you give Archon a team that can enable a core mechanics namely her slash dreams and crimson knot she will perform regardless whether you have a best installed team comp or not so below are some of the sample team comps that players can consider for the best install it's going to be Archon, Silverwolf, Pella as well as a trend sustain right best install for less than E2 we always need to run 2 nihility as for the reasons I mentioned previously a uh, preservation sustain is going to be ideal due to trend's absurd absurd value compared to an abundant sustain such as Gallagher uh, Pella it is recommended for Pella to have E4 since res debuff might not be very consistent especially if you miss them right for another alternative if you don't want to run silver wolf and uh, you don't have silver wolf you can consider running archron pella with calf cow or black swan plus a trend sustain right so this is especially prevalent if your black swan is already an idolin one a uh, calf cow's follow-up attack it is also considered a debuff while black swan she does have a lot of debuffs on top of the damage right she has vulnerability debuff which archron can make use of since you can cast archron's ultimate during the enemy's turn right she also has defense down so for the last slot i Either Pella or Silver Wolf is going to be dependent on the situation. It will defense down for Pella, then single target for Silver Wolf. Then for another team comp, which is a very, very free to play friendly team comp, is basically Archron, Gui Naifen, Pella, and a sustain, right? So this is very free to play because Fire Kiss, it is considered as a debuff for Archron. So you can stack on Fire Kiss up to three times. Gui Naifen's ultimate, it also triggers Fire Kiss, which further adds on more slash streams, right? And this team comp, even at an E0, S0 Archron, can one cycle our current memory of Chaos 12 Yanqing. So it is a uh, respectable, respectable damage output, which further goes to show even free to place should not think that Archon is a, a whale unit, right? Even free to play at E0S using this team comp can still one cycle Yanqing, right? And finally, uh, this is something for consideration, especially for players who are thinking of trying a no sustain team comp. Due to Archon's insane base kit, a 3 plus 1, which is 3 supports plus Archon, is very, very possible by forsaking a sustain and opting in a sparkle to further boost Archon's damage numbers, right? It enables Archon to move twice in a single wave, while Archon can stack all in attack percentage. The skill point from Sparkle is also quite useful for Pella and Zero to use their skills, and Bronya and Rame can also be considered in place of Sparkle just for the 3 plus 1 ultra carry output right uh, one thing to note is that cn doesn't really like to use well sustain because action value delay especially if you were to use this with another sustain such as trend sustain uh, it's going to delay the enemy's actions which means that they're not going to hit your unit with a trend sustain right unless you run this team comp without a trend sustain you just run well silver wolf pella then that might see some interesting plays right? so something to keep in mind one last thing to note before we wrap up today is going to be an e2 s1 archron right i will talk about this a little bit more in the future but e2 s1 archron with Sparkle, Bronya, plus Pella slash Silver Wolf. It is our current strongest E2 S1 team comp, rivaling even E2 in Peter Lune. So do stay tuned for future testings. And with that, we've come to the end of Archon CN unit analysis. I know this unit uh, it can be quite overwhelming, especially the part about her slash dreams and her crimson on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, give her debuffs, give her attack, give her crit. Watch her spam her ultimate and you're pretty much just gonna clear all the enemies, right? She is not a whale unit. You don't need her synergy icon. You can run her with very free to play friendly team comps and you can still achieve exceptional results, right? So that is pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any further discussions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below or join on my Discord at discord.g4 Pokies Village, where we have a very active community talking about Hong Kong Star on a daily basis, right? You can check out my stream. That's gonna be twitch.tv for Mr. Poki as well as on YouTube. I'll be streaming to both platforms almost every single day and I'll be seeing you guys at the, the time of this video goes live on Akron's Banner, right so all the best for our crown pools and i'll see you guys next time take care I, I i genuinely cannot believe this shit i genuinely cannot believe this shit i genuinely i genuinely cannot believe this shit guys
I je- Did I say I genuinely- I, I, Did I say how I genuinely cannot believe this shit? I genuinely cannot believe this shit, guys.